What's up everyone? I did a little impulse shopping here to upgrade my NAS. Let's get into it. As we kick this off, let me know down below. Are you using a Synology NAS? Are you all flash? Are you using the SSD cache? While I get stuff started here, let's answer the first question. Of what is Synology's SSD cache? Synology's SSD cache is basically you take between one and six SSDs and it can be SAT SSDs or M2 SSDs, they just recommend it being the same one or the same type of drive to optimize either read transaction as a read only SSD cache or read and write transactions as a read write SSD cache. Basically you, you create the cache and mount it on your volumes in your NAS and then your most commonly accessed files get stored in the cache and can be accessed really, really fast. To set up an SSD cache, you need at least one SSD or two SSDs if you're gonna do a read-write cache and then configure it in either RAID 0, 1, 5, or 10. Also, if you're using a read-write cache, you do need to have extra system RAM available to handle the computations that happen with the caching. It's about 400 kilobytes per one gig of cache. The documentation for SSD cache implies that some of the newer models don't have the original write cache limit. But on my model, since it's a couple years old, my Synology 918 Plus can only do a one terabyte read write cache. So that's what I did. I bought two SSDs that are a terabyte each. They're on the compatibility list and I threw them in the NAS. The Synology SSD cache is recommended to be used with the Synology applications on the device. So if you're using Docker, if you're using this as shared storage for Hyper-V, ESXi, if you're using the backup products, Plex even, all these things that create either many databases to operate or have lots of configuration files will benefit from the SSD cache because the applications are gonna reference those files and if the applications on the NAS can reference them faster, then everything's just gonna move faster. For example, with Plex, even though sequential read and write transactions don't take advantage of an SSD cache. There's a ton of metadata that goes along with a Plex library if you have a sizable amount. There is a noticeable improvement on how fast the menus and metadata for movies and TV shows load now that it's on an SSD cache. Hey guys, uh, I forgot to mention this while recording all the voiceover work, but uh, don't worry about this error if you bought devices off the compatibility list. Uh, I checked with a colleague of mine who had a recently uh, purchased Synology NAS and did a memory upgrade. He bought off the compatibility list as well, but it was not Synology branded uh, and got the same error. So uh, there's rumors floating around Reddit right now that the next line of Synology devices is going to require the Synology branded uh, hard drives and memory oh. upgrades. So. If you bought off the compatibility list, don't worry about this message. Back to what I previously recorded. The downsides of this are kind of straightforward. Synology says plainly in their knowledge base article, will not optimize sequential read and write transactions, oh. which is 100% true. The one caveat I will throw out there is if your NAS is a mixed use situation where you are doing file access and application usage, now at least your file access shouldn't impact those applications. So if you're doing a big transfer, it's a computer backup, it's a large video file, you know, 20, 30, 40 gigs, while you're transferring that, if someone else is using the chat app, the photos app, something you have running in Docker. As long as you have multiple network connections, which is really easy to do on one gig, you shouldn't notice. The, the file transfer shouldn't slow down the application or vice versa now. But yeah, as Synology says, direct file transfers, you won't get any improvement at all directly with it. The other downside of it is obviously cost. It's not a huge one anymore since the prices of SSDs have generally come down. I got a sale on these SSDs on Amazon, but they were a little bit less than $50 a piece. So it's a hundred dollar upgrade to make everything on the NAS move faster. Depending upon your use case, it may or may not be worth it. There is some reaction out there. Some of the other videos are complaining about the fact that the file transfer speeds, the sequential read and writes aren't optimized. And if you're familiar with server technologies, if you buy a Dell server, an HP server, 
all the raid cards that you can pay an upgrade fee and essentially turn that on as well to create an SSD cache will help with the sequential read and writes. Now, why didn't Synology do that? So why didn't Synology do this? When you break down the numbers and the use case in these, these Synology NAS, it's not hard to fully saturate network connectivity. So for instance here, one mechanical hard drive can operate at 100 to the very high side 300, more realistically 130 to 170 megabytes per second. A one gig ethernet connection can only do 125, 130 megabytes per second. So one mechanical hard drive can consume a full one gig network port. Now let's just say, you know, you're investing in your future, you're doing a lot of video editing, so you upgrade, so you have 10 gig connectivity between it. Well, going up one level, a SATA SSD, nonetheless an M2 one, but a run of the mill SATA SSD is anywhere between three and 600 megabytes per second. So to max out a 10 gig connection, you only need two SATA SSDs to max that out. So the, the, the bare minimums to max out network connectivity are not hard to get to, to fully max out. And then if you want to take it to the extreme case, an M2 SSD, like the ones I just bought here, they read and write at roughly 3000 megabytes three gigabits per second. So again, my a 10 gig connection is maxed out threefold with one of these SSDs, nonetheless two, and that's the optimal on wired network. Don't even get me started on wireless. Basically wireless, you have too much interference anyways to fully max out the connectivity. Even if you're all running on Wi-Fi six, that's over a gig per second. You're never gonna get that. So wireless is even worse than wired. Wired is not hard to max out in realistic use cases for Synology NAS in its market space. So that's why I didn't do it. Plus on top of it too, when you look at the resources involved, these Synology NASs, they don't have hardware RAID built in. Everything's software based. So it's not that hard to max out the performance at each level because there's nothing there to assist it. Yeah. Now that the SSD cache is created, is mounted, is functional, should you do it? Just to recap this whole thing here, if you're using the built-in apps, if you're using the backup services for either the NAS files or Office 365 or collecting backups from VMs, PCs, whatever, or the productivity apps or any of that stuff, yes, do it. It'll optimize it and design the assumption that you want it to move faster. Doing this will improve performance and be way cheaper than doing an all flash array. If you're just using this for a file server, then no, you're not gonna see a performance difference. Save your money for your next upgrade, a video card upgrade or whatever. Uh, but yeah, sequential read and writes do nothing, so. But on that bombshell, we can end. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this is all helpful for you. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment. 